Hello everyone, and welcome to Minimalist Gourmet. For today I'll be teaching you how to make some delicious gluten-free strawberry muffins. These muffins are so tender and have that fresh, delicious strawberry flavor. I can't wait. Let's get started. You can use whatever gluten-free flour blend that you would like, but today I'll be using my gluten-free flour blend that I've made for baked goods. As with all of my videos, there's a recipe in the description below, so definitely check that out. Along with that, there's a short that you should watch for me making this exact flour blend. Or you could use all-purpose flour if you're not on a gluten-free diet. Whichever flour you choose to use, you're going to need to put in one and a half cups, three quarters of a cup granulated white sugar, turbinado sugar would also work really well here, two teaspoons of baking powder, a mere one quarter teaspoon salt to make those flavors pop, and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. We're going to set aside our dry ingredients so we can work on our wet ingredients. Our wet ingredients here starts with one half of a cup milk that's at room temperature, and we're going to put in one and a half teaspoons vanilla extract. I have one third of a cup butter that I've just barely melted here, and you want to make sure that this isn't super hot. In fact, I like to give everything a nice little stir here so that it evens the temperature out a bit, because I'm going to be placing in an egg next, and you want to make sure that butter isn't so rocket hot that it coagulates any of the proteins in the white. Give this a very thorough mix to beat that egg into the milk. Don't worry, the butter will definitely separate and stay like an oil slick on top. That's not a problem. Thoroughly mix the dry ingredients before making a small well in the center in which we can pour the wet ingredients. The reason that you mix the dry ingredients separately and the wet ingredients separately and then bring them together is this technique is what creates a very nice tender crumb or texture when we finally bake it. You can mix the wet ingredients separately as much as you want and the dry ingredients separately as much as you want, but once you bring them together, you want to try to work this mixture as little as possible until it just comes together. So I'm going to stir this until everything is nice and mixed here, but not overwork it, and I don't see any big traces of flour through here. Once I see that, I'm going to stop and I'm going to walk away. I have about a cup and a quarter of strawberries that I've washed, hulled, and then diced pretty fine here, and I'm going to pour them right on top. Gently fold in these strawberries by making a swooping and a cutting action just like this until they're just mixed in. You don't want to over stir these because you're going to break down those strawberries and they're going to bleed out a little bit into your batter. After a couple of folds, it should look like this and you're done. Stop mixing. I'll be baking my muffins in these silicone cupcake liners, which you've seen me use a dozen times on this channel before. They are durable, flexible, nothing sticks to them, and the best part is they stand on their own without the need for a muffin tin. When portioning out your batter, you do want to be fairly generous and fill up your muffin liners until they are about four-fifths of the way full. As this bakes, of course, this batter will expand by a bit, but it doesn't expand by a whole lot. As you can see, I filled my muffin liners fairly full, and I didn't have any problem with them overflowing once I baked them. This recipe I've provided today yielded exactly 12 muffins. And we're going to bake these in a preheated 400 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. 18 minutes later, I'm pulling out my muffins and they look like this. Absolutely delicious. Of course, check to make sure they're done. You can use a toothpick or a piece of spaghetti and stick it in the center. Pull it out, make sure it comes out clean. There shouldn't be any wet or raw dough stuck to it. As soon as you've determined they're done, you want to pull them off of the baking sheet so they don't continue to cook and overcook. If you have a cooling rack, go ahead and use that. I don't actually have a cooling rack, but this little rack for my toaster oven works great. And guys, it really is just that easy to make these delicious gluten-free strawberry muffins in your own home kitchen tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. I really do appreciate your time and attention today. Thank you so, so much. I really hope you enjoyed the episode and you got a little something useful out of it. I hope to see you all again here next time on the next episode of Minimalist Gourmet.